Okay guys, the final part to make the game work, um, well the game works already, but just to make it actually so it's more of a game and has a competitive part of it, we're going to do the game over part of these and we're going to actually have a score as well. So you can do this wherever you want, I'm going to put this um, below my classes and above my hero select and I'm just going to um, define a, um, sorry, the game over. So the game over, all this is going to do is it's going to check that um, my hero's, um, if my character's life is less than one, that it's going to trigger this game over to actually happen. So I need to make sure in these brackets I carry across the character. And then my if statement here is going to be if the character.health is less than one, print you have um, no health left print thanks for playing and in a minute what we will do we'll leave it blank for a second but we will um, change this part here to actually um, have a high score so and we'll add this up for them as they go and just to make it final we're going to use the exit command here and this will actually close python but it will come up with a prompt and the user will be able to see what they got to um, so where does this actually get triggered well we need to trigger this once the enemy once the enemy actually attacks my character so it's going to need to happen a couple of times so I'm actually going to copy it and I'm going to put it in all the places it needs to happen. So in battle state here, we have our if the enemy health is greater than zero when the enemy actually attacks, this is one of the places where the game over uh, will actually need to trigger. Option two as well, same thing again. The bit which is if the enemy health is greater than zero, we need to trigger that as well. Because once they've hit us, we need to check whether or not our character's health is actually um, as whether or not we have any health left, whether or not the game is now ended. And then this one here for everything else when um, uh, when. So my else statements as well, because the else is going to be triggered um, if they uh, if we, if we miss. I actually need to put them there as well. So there's four different places for me to put them so far. So I'll go back for a second so you can see. So in the first choice here, if the enemy health is greater than zero um, and they attack us, we need to run the game over character here to see if we've actually got a game over because if they've hit us. Um, we also need to run it for the else statement because the else statement is if we trip because if we trip and fall we're going to be losing some health anyway so again we need to check that that game over that our character actually has enough health to continue after that in the second choice here again we're going to do the same thing if the enemy dot health is greater than zero we need to call, call the game, game uh, the game over and then the else bit here again so if we've slipped we're going to call the game over bit there Last bit here, if we choose uh, option three and we run away, if we run away, obviously we don't need to call the, um, the bit there because that's absolutely fine, but we will need to call it here a little bit on because again, we're taking damage. So we need to make sure we can actually have enough health to continue. And that should do it. So let's actually test this to see if it actually runs. A good way to test it is to take one of your character's health I'm going to put my warrior class down to one health, and then we're going to. I'm going to test it with this character and see if we can get it to trigger. So make sure you select the warrior class. So we see here that he's only got one health. So if I select sword, so we see immediately it's triggered because I've slipped. So the bat has attacked me. I've now got zero health remaining, and then it just says thanks for playing. So straight away there. Let's just let me change him so he's got 10 health, so we can just have a couple of goes of this. 
So warrior again, 10 health now, wild troll, let's try the sword. So here we've got all the way down to the bottom here. Um, we've swung a sword here. It's slipped. It's, we've managed to not um, kill this last enemy. Um, we've gone into the minus health. You can see now we've hit actually going to a minus here. And it says you, cause, because of that you've got no health left. Thanks for playing. And then what we would do is give them the score. So how do we actually do this score part? Well, there's a couple different ways we can do it. But because of the way we've set this up, we're actually going to do it... Um, we're going to do it this way. At the very bottom, before anything else, we're going to take a score variable and it's going to equal zero. And in the battle state, we are going to carry through that score variable. And what we're going to do is on our else statements here for every time we've got um, because these three statements actually select the three different enemies anyway um, so it's looking at if the enemy's name was goblin um, change it back to 20 health but also let's give ourselves 10 points and then if the enemy's name was bat Let's give ourselves five points. And if we manage to uh, get rid of troll, let's give ourselves um, 15 points. So here, we're actually adding in the amount of points we're going to get. I'm going to use this variable a little bit later on as well. We do now need to put these scores into the second choice as well because the same thing happens here so I'm going to add my scores in again so exactly the same scores so uh, 10 for the goblin so score equals itself plus 10 and it equals itself so that it can update itself plus 5 score equals score plus 15 so you don't want to just equals the score to a new number you want whatever's in there to be added on to the amount of uh, the amount of the score that you've got okay now last thing we need to do is we need to um, return score in both of these now This may not be 100% necessary, but it is always good to uh, get into the habit of returning variables. Because a lot of languages won't let you use them unless you return them. Python's a little bit more forgiving in this sense, but it's always good to uh, make sure you know what you're doing with those bits there. Now... Once we've done that, the last thing to do is in the game over, we need character and we also need score. And we're going to print, you have scored. And then that score variable. And this should be the last thing for updating the game over part of it and actually updating the um, score part of it. So now you can see um, who's got the best score and uh, who's going to be going furthest. But actually, before we, before we say that, let's actually make sure it runs. So warrior again. So battle state uh, missing uh, one required positional argument, which is one. So let's have a look. Ah, it's because down the back bot. So here... In battle state, I've said we need score because I'm going to be updating the score variable. I need to pass that into battle state. But here, I also need to put score. And I call the function, I need to make sure that the variables that I need are actually passed into it as well. So let's try it again. Okay, so that's worked this time, so we know the score has been passed correctly into that. So let's see. Uh, and again, so 
game over, you've probably guessed what's happened here. Game over uh, character at the moment is in the game over bit, but I actually said when I programmed that game over that score would be part of it as well. So every time I've written game over now, I need to add in score as well now. Now that I actually have a um, score which I'm going to be using. So carefully pick back through here, you should be adding score to four, five actually, I think, five. Uh, game over functions, that's the third one there. This is the fourth one, and then that is the fifth one. Okay, so I'm doing this comma and then the new variable there. So it's always good to test, love to test these things, make sure they work. I'm gonna uh, get myself a clean shell as well, it's got red text on there. There we go. So warrior, then options there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unfortunately we didn't get to trigger any of the game over bit because I managed to beat everything there. So let's change while we're testing, put his health down to five and uh, see if we can get this to work because we want to obviously be able to have a couple of goes. Right. Okay, so we've uh, beat that one. Okay. So after a little bit of um, mucking around with it, I've realized where I've gone wrong with this last bit. So um, when it was returning the score, um, it's actually was returning the score which was too big, too small, things like that. <clears throat> and all it is really is at the bottom here, where we've got our character equals, here I select. When we return the score, this here returns this variable back into the game. But in order to use that variable, obviously we set the score to zero. In order to use it, we have to assign it to a variable as well. So all we need to do is score equals the name of the function, which is battle state, and then score inside it. And what it will do is that once battle state has run its course, so we've fought the enemy and we've got to the end of it, and the score is being returned, it will return that score here and add it into our score variable. And then right at the end, when our um, when our game comes to a game over, you'll be able to see that it's actually added those up. So I've just, here's one I made earlier. Actually put these together. And in between each one, I'm just going to print score so that you can see what the score actually is. And I'm going to get rid of these bottom ones here. So all I've changed here is instead of just calling battle state, I'm call I'm creating a variable called score, and I'm assigning um, the returned score here from battle state, and it gets added in every time. And that just means that when I get to my game over screen, I can actually produce a score for my uh, for my users. Let's run it and see if it works. What's happened? So I've run this first, but this number here is my current score. Let's print score there. So we know currently I'm at 10, which is what it should be. I've finished off uh, that goblin, so that should be at 10. Let's try again here. And another goblin's appeared. So again, I've just finished that one as well and you can see that the score is now increased to 20 which is what we want so it was initially 10 I've added 10 to it here so it should now be 20 I've, another goblin has appeared so let's fight this one as well and see if we can get it to come up to 30 so we know that the goblin one is working it's adding uh, 10 every single time and we've got a bat that's just turned up so let's see if we can get rid of the bat there we go so it's 35 there for the bat another bat's turned up so now up to 40. I'll just see if I can trigger this to actually get to the game over loop. I didn't actually do enough fighting to get to the game over, so again, I'm just going to change my character's health to something lower. 
hopefully we can trigger the game over, which is going to give us our final score. There we go, so 10 to start. Now up to 20, but I've got very little health, so I should. There we go, so I died when fighting the troll, so I didn't get the points for the troll, So I, and uh, it triggered the game over, and it took my, my score of 20 from defeating the two goblins, and it put it here, so you've scored 20. And that is it. So it's a little bit all over the place today, but we got it done eventually. So if we have a quick look, just to oversee what we've done. We've created the game over code here, which will actually produce a score for us. We've added that game over code into the battle states here, when we we're meant to be triggered to uh, possibly have zero health. We've returned a score for each different type of uh, enemy we've defeated. And then at the very end, all we've done is we've, as we've returned the score, we're adding it into this score variable so that when the game over is triggered, we can use this score variable to tell the user exactly how much they scored. So the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to actually start looking at actually how we'd make a sort of a, a scores table and save all of our friends' top scores to it.